All right, so my name is Adrian Stanley. I was recently tagged for the ALS challenge. Um, I still have to dump a bucket of water on my head or donate $100. Um, I'm gonna dump the bucket of water, uh, but first I figured I would talk about ALS and what it is and why uh, we need money for research and whatnot. All right, so ALS, it stands for amyotrophic lateral sclerosis. And basically um, what happens in this disease is uh, there's degeneration of your motor neurons in your brain and your spinal cord. And basically, motor neurons, for those who don't know, they, it's, uh, they are the neurons, that are, the cells that are responsible for the control of your muscles and your muscle movements. Um, so in this disease, these degenerate, and over time, uh, people lose, slowly lose control over their muscles, and eventually they end up paralyzed. Um, so uh, that's a simple explanation. Um, the more deep explanation, uh, there are several genes that uh, are usually in, are that are involved in uh, ALS. Um, uh, I'm only going to talk about two of them. Uh, I'll leave a link uh, about all the other ones and how they play how they play a role in it. But I'm only going to talk about these two because I found these two interesting. Um, so there's this protein called SOD1, and that stands for uh, superoxide demutase. So basically, what this protein does is all the free radicals, the oxygen free radicals spit out by the mitochondria from cellular respiration, basically it converts all those oxygen radicals into hydrogen peroxide, so it doesn't cause damage to the cells, it can cause all this oxidative damage. But in ALS, there's in, in certain in the SOD1 version of ALS, you have, um, and you have a mutation in this gene, and as a result, uh, the SOD1 doesn't do conversion of the superoxides. So these so these oxygen radicals now are floating around, and they can do oxidative damage to the cells, and and of course. That's bad, but there's more from the the what people really need to research about this is why the SOD1 mutation uh, is only toxic to motor neurons because this because this SOD1 is also in the other cells in the body. So why is it only damaging motor neurons? So obviously we need more research into why why that is. And for this other gene I want to talk about, this. Uh, TD, TDP43 gene, basically this TDP43 protein, uh, basically what it normally does, it's uh, a repressor for certain for the transcription of certain proteins, so it'll bind either RNA or DNA and repress transcription of this certain gene. And basically, when there's a mutation in this, um, when there's a mutation in this, the it doesn't it doesn't do its normal function. Basically, it, 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 instead of binding to DNA and, and RNA to, to repress things, uh, it, it gets transported out of the nucleus. So normally, where the normal, the normal TP43 proteins, they're all located in the nucleus where they can bind to DNA and RNA. But the mutation is transported into the cytosol. And basically, it gets phosphorylated there. And then other TDP43 uh, incorrectly transcribed proteins all clump together and they aggregate, and that is what leads to the neurodegeneration of the of that specific cell. Um, so once again, more more research needs to be done into that, and of course, there's tons and tons of uh, tons of tons of genes that are involved, and those are just the simple ones I'm talking about. Um, yeah, so. Thank you, Martin, for tagging me and giving me a chance to talk about this. Uh, I will dump this water on my head as soon as I can find a bucket and some ice. And I'm pretty sure if I said anything wrong, uh, Andrew will correct me, as I know he will, as he always does. And yeah, so I'm off.